well, hello and welcome to another thrift flip. Today we are transforming my brother's old, unused, unwanted, plain white shirt into a boosty -y blouse, hopefully. <laughs> These crop blouses have been all the rage at the moment, so I thought, why not jump on this trend? I think the style is so flattering and it's puffy sleeves. How can you not love puffy sleeves? Let's talk plan of action. This is the look that I am aiming for. Let's break it down, starting with the bodice. First of all, I'm going to measure myself and see the length that I would like it to be and then adding an inch for seam allowance, I'm going to cut out this length from the body of the shirt. I've also decided to go for a slight V-shape neckline, so I'll make sure to cut that in also. Now that I have my bodice cut, I'm going to sew a simple hem along the top and bottom edges to make them nice and clean. Now, obviously it's far too wide at the moment, but we will get to that later. Now I'm going to focus on the cups of the blouse. Grabbing a wired bra that fits me really well, I'm going to trace around the cups onto the shirt and then cut these U shapes out. Make sure each cup is on either side of the button placket because you do not want to sew this shut and not be able to get into or out of your top. By using your own bra, it means that you'll end up with a shirt that is tailored to you and fits your curves perfectly. Now, we could always leave the shirt like this and have a Regina George moment, if you know what I mean. But I think I prefer to leave my nipples unexposed. <laughs> okay, so to make the new cups, I'm going to measure the length and width of my own bra cups. I'm then going to add one inch on the length for seam allowance and modesty and add four inches on the width so that I have more fabric to gather and bunch up and make frilly. So I'm going to trace out these measurements onto a spare bit of shirt that I have left and simply freehand the cup shape and cut out two identical pieces of this shape. So you might be looking at these cups thinking, these are humongous and yes, they are big, but don't worry, we will come to that. Everything will get shrunk to size. Now that we have our cups cut, I'm going to hem each top edge by double turning it and sewing it straight down. I'm going to grab a long piece of elastic and sew it about an inch away from the top edge using a zigzag stitch. As I sew, I'm going to make sure that the elastic is being stretched to its maximum stretching capacity. The zigzag stitch means that the thread can move with the elastic, whereas a straight stitch, if stretched, would snap. Once the elastic is attached, I will snip off the excess and hopefully we should have ourselves a nice little frilly cup. Look how cute this is. Okay, so now that we have added in our elastic very successfully, I might add, we want to gather the fabric around the rest of the cup to make it a 3D shape and more suitable for holding a breast. <laughs> I'm going to do this with a straight stitch, but I'm going to turn my stitch length to the highest possible setting on my machine that is four and then simply sewing around the edge of the cup. Make sure you don't back stitch when you do this because we want to be able to pull on those loose threads to be able to gather the fabric. And we simply pull on the threads and gather the fabric until the cups are a good size and shape to fit the inserts we have in our top. Placing the cups right sides together with the shirt, I'm going to pin them in place. Make sure that the gathers are nice and evenly spread out. I'm now going to attach the cups just with a straight stitch. Don't forget to change your stitch length back to the standard 2.5. Now our cups are fully attached and our nipples are unexposed. Woohoo! <laughs> I'm going to overlock this seam for a cleaner finish and you can also do this using a zigzag stitch. 
Now it's time to address the issue of fitting the top. It is clearly far too wide at the moment. So what I'm going to do is try the top on inside out and then pin it very snugly around my body and mark on each side how much I will need to take in. I'm then going to sew down these new side seams and hopefully we should have a really well-fitting top. Our top is taking shape. Now to tackle the piece de resistance of this top, the puffy sleeves. My plan for the sleeves is to utilise the sleeves the shirt already has by cutting them out in their arm shape. Safe to say my ingenious plan for the sleeves did not work. I thought I could simply cut the shirt sleeves out, add some elastic, sew it to the top and boom! Puffy sleeves, right? However, that led us to this. The sleeves are a shit show. I'll show you what I mean. <laughs> the thing is, is that it doesn't even look that bad on camera, but in reality, this is so tight. Like, I'm losing circulation in my arms just wearing this. I mean, you can see how tight it is here and like at the back. I've also now been working on this top like all day and I'm so done with it and done with sewing. To make a puffy sleeve that doesn't cut the circulation off in your arm, you have to use more fabric so that when it is gathered, there is still enough room for your arm to fit comfortably through it. Mistakes happen. Don't cry. I'm trying so hard not to right now. <sighs> I guess this is just the realities of sewing. Hello. Today is a new day. Let's do this. I have inserted a panel into each of the sleeves to make them bigger and able to actually fit my arms comfortably. I realised it was stupid of me to think I could use the existing sleeves on the shirt. Sometimes I wonder if I have anything in there, but anyway, it's a learning process and at least it means that you can avoid that mistake because I have made it for you. I went ahead and attached the new, bigger sleeves to the top. We have sleeves. Then cut the sleeves to my desired length and then gave them a final hem before finishing. This was once a plain, neglected, unhappy white shirt searching for a body that was willing to wear her. And now, she is unrecognisable. She is frilly and fun and beautiful. Regina George would be shaking in her boots. For real though, this top was not without its challenges, but I'm really happy that we have a finished garment. That's something to be proud of, right? If you've been following along with this video and you make one yourself, feel free to tag me on Instagram. I'm just at Vintage Thursday. I would love to see your versions of this. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to subscribe. I have a lot more sewing content planned, so stay tuned. Okay, well, that's it for this video. I hope you're having a lovely day and maybe I will see you in my next video. Bye.